Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we worship you for this moment. We thank you, Father, because you are the Lord. Father, we commit this, your word, into your hands. Lord, take absolute control today in the name of Jesus. Father, grant us the unction and the, the power of your word from your throne, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, do not permit our tongues to say what you have not said in the name of Jesus. Let your word come from your throne and touch the souls of your children in the name of Jesus. Father, let your word be an indicator, an instructor, O oh Lord, to us today in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, teach me, O oh Lord, to divide your word rightly and evenly in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let your name be glorify Lord. We thank you Father. Father we pray that you give us a quiet room Father without any disturbance from children and noise in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for you are Lord in Jesus name. Amen. amen and amen. In Proverbs chapter 28 verse 13. Proverbs 28 13. And I want everybody, all of us, to read it together. Proverbs 28 and 30, if you are there, just raise up your hand, let me see if you are there. Proverbs 28, verse 13. <clears throat> Some people are still looking for it, seriously. Proverbs 28, 13. We read it together. Yeah. Now, I want everybody to read it together. One, two, go. He who covers his sins will not prosper, but whoever confess and forsakes them we have mercy. One more time. He who covers his sins will not prosper, but whoever confess and forsakes them we have mercy. One more time. He who covers his sins will not prosper. But whoever confesses them and forsakes them, we have mercy. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's where we're going to be hearing for for the next few minutes. We have only less than we are almost twenty minutes to go, and I want us to make use of it today. He who covereth his sin will not prosper. But whosoever confesses and forsakes them, we have mercy. The Bible says there is no peace for the wicked. In other words, there is no peace for a sinner. He who covereth his sin will not prosper. But whoever confesses and forsakes them, we obtain mercy. So the issue here is sin. And the act there is to cover up, trying to cover up. And the Bible says anyone that covereth sin will not what? Prosper. So let me, let me start by telling us what prosperity is. Now, when I'm talking about prosper, when the Bible says prosper, the Bible is not talking about only financial blessing. But it's just, when, when you hear the word prosper, it is just telling you that it's, it's to have some things in excess. You know, in the way that other people do not have it. It could be prosperity in the areas of health. It could be prosperity in the areas of finances. It could be prosperity in the areas of, of, of obtaining favor. Favor from people. Amen. Remember in the book of Psalm 1. Can we put our finger in that and talk to the book of Psalm 1 so that we want to check what prosperity is? Psalm chapter 1. Is it a Psalm or Samuel? Psalm. Psalm chapter 1. And I read from verse 1. Mm -hmm. 
Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and is in his law he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit in season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whoever, whatever he does shall prosper. And look at what it says about the other party. The ungodly are not so, but are like a chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinner in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the ways of ungodly shall perish. So prosperity means when the things you do works out always when you have enough to eat. So my own definition of prosperity does not mean having money in excess. But if you have it, that's, there's no sin in it. If it's gotten in a legal way and, 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 and holy way. Amen. In the... In the so, yeah, praise the Lord. Thank you. So, having things favorably from God. That's what they call prosperity. When you have been favored by God, when the Lord favors you in and out, when the Lord grants you favor, whatever you need, when you, when you have always and timely everything that you need, that's what they call prosperity. It is the favor of the Lord. Amen. The Bible says, the Lord give, it is the Lord that giveth what? That, that, that giveth blessing without having no sorrow to it. Amen. So when the Lord supply your blessing without sorrow, we call it prosperity. That's what the Bible says, He who covers his sin will not prosper. So in other words, anyone that covers up sin will not experience God's favor, God's mercy, God's provision. Amen. Amen. So in other words, if a man begin to live in such, in such, I will still open another Bible passage to, to, to explain that further to us. So in other words, when the sin is concealed, it destroys destinies. It destroys the plan of God for a life. It frustrates the purpose and the danger and agenda of God concerning a, a, a destiny. Proverbs 16, can we put our finger in, in Proverbs 28? We'll soon come back there. Proverbs chapter 16. Verse 7. Can we read it together, everybody, if we are there? Proverbs chapter 16, verse 7. Proverbs 16, verse 7. One, two, go. When a man's way pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemy to be at peace with him. When a man's way pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemy to be at peace with him. So that is what another word for prosperity. When the Lord make even your enemy to be at peace, at peace with at peace with him. When the Lord keeps short the mouth of your of your enemy. When your enemy begins to come to worship you instead of fighting you, that is when your way pleases the Lord. But in this in this context we are teaching in this word we are talking about in Proverbs 28, it says, He who cover up his sin, which means if you are cover up your sin, you will not have your way pleasing the Lord. And therefore you will not experience the prosperity that we're talking about. So, like I said, it's not prosperity of money I'm talking about alone, but money is just one of it. Prosperity of joy, prosperity of of health, prosperity of, of supplies, prosperity of growth, prosperity of establishment, which means whatever you do comes in its time like a leaf, just like in, in Psalm 1 that we read, like a, a, a tree planted by the rivers of water. Amen. Amen. So when you see some plantation by the waters, they, they, they produce differently from, all the, from those who are far from the water. Their leaves will be green and fresh, and they will be productive, and they will be timely. So when everything you have become timely is when you do not have any cover of sin. But it says, when your sins are covered, the prosperity is hampered, is 
cut off, is terminated. So in other words, covering up of sin is poisonous, is destructive, is frustrating, is terminating. It can abort testimony, it can abort destiny, it can abort life. Sin, when committed, any act of sin committed, cannot be concealed. You must understand that. We must know that sin cannot be covered up. Even though if you think nobody sees you, I want to tell you that there are three, three people that know about your sin. Even those ones that nobody knows about. The first person that knows about it is you. The second person that knows about it is God. The third person that has seen you is the agent of darkness. Devil, I won't say devil because devil is not omnipresent. It's not present everywhere, but it has its agents, monitoring agents, accusing agents, everywhere that he appointed. And they report to him. So, and your, your soul knows that you are a sinner. I was telling to the people in Balearis today, I said, forget about the way we speak. Everybody will say, everybody will say I'm a child of God. And when I ask questions now, I say, how many people are sure that when, if Christ shows up now, in rapture of the saints, you will go with everybody, most of everybody will raise up their hands and say, I'm sure I will go. But your soul cannot deceive you. You know, we are human, and we are given body for identification, like I always say. But the soul that lives in you, is you. That is where I'm speaking from. That is where you can hear my vocal cord from, from my soul from inside of me. And this body is given to identification to show who I am. Because I am a natural man made from the dust of the heart by God. So a time is coming when a man will no longer be in the body. They will now become a spiritual being. They, be, they will go into the, life of the, into the realm of the spirit. Then you will no longer have a body anymore. It is that soul now that will be traveling around. So in other words, that soul will be able to see the heavenly. The soul will be able to see the people on the heart, but the people on the heart will no longer be able to see the soul. It's okay. Amen. So, your soul knows who you are. Your soul cannot tell lies. Soul is not a liar. Soul cannot deceive. But body can deceive. Body can tell lies. Body can betray. And body can deceive. For instance, in this, earthly, in this end time, there is a machine that they call lie detector. When there is a serious case in the court, and they want to find out what the truth is, they will, in, they will bring, they will bring lie, a lie detecting machine, and they will put it upon the accused person or whoever they want to get the truth from. And as the, as the person is speaking, they will be watching the reaction on the screen. The reaction on the screen. What are they watching? They are watching at the reaction of his blood through his soul. Because soul cannot lie. Even though the body is telling lie, this, it will be showing on the screen that it's, there's element of force in what he's saying. And the person, the, 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 the technician or the person in charge of the computer will tell the court, I think this place is a lie. He's, he's not speaking the truth here. And they will say, why? Because his soul is passing the message through his blood system that the statement he spoke last is false. Because your soul cannot lie. And that is why you don't need anybody when you leave this world and you pass to the, to the world beyond. You won't need anybody to tell you where to go to, whether heaven or hell. You walk yourself straight there. Because you are now a soul. Like I told you, the soul does not lie. Soul does not deceive. Soul does not present, pretend. So when the body drops, the soul will continue to where it will spend eternity. So I just give an, an illustration to know that your soul inside of you knows that you are a sinner. And therefore your soul condemns you before anybody condemns you. You understand that? Whenever you are praying for something that is, that is given to children, or whenever you are praying, you are confronting any evil spirit in, in, in the physical contact, in prayer, your soul will tell you that you are not qualified to do such prayers. 
Your soul will tell you that you are not a qualified pastor or evangelist to deal with such cases. And that's why you see some people they will say, I don't do deliverance. Some pastors, some evangelists, they will say, I don't, I don't, I cannot cast anything out. But Jesus did that. When Jesus was going about preaching and teaching, he was he came across some, some demons, demon possessed people, demonized people, he cast out their demons. But if a soul tells a body that the body is a sinner, the soul will never prosper. Sorry, the body will never prosper. If the soul tells you, if your soul condemns you, that you are a convicted sinner, even though nobody knows about it, that body will not prosper. You have not yet confessed to anybody, you fail to tell anybody, you refuse to let it go, let it out, because just because you say, I have prayed to God and I believe God has forgiven me. Let me tell us today, there are some sins you pray to God in your room about, and the Lord forgives you. There are such sins, many of them. For instance, the sin of, you know, anything that does not have to do with the third, putting the third party into trouble. But when you have a sin that puts another third party into trouble, that they, they punish somebody here instead of you, that means you did something that somebody got punished instead of you, the real offender. Then those kind of forgiveness, they don't do it in the room. You do it first in the room and you now go and confess to the authority or the people. Say, see, I, I'm sorry, I was the one that did that in last time, but somebody else got punished. There was an evangelist preaching one day. And I was hearing, I, w I actually watched him on the, on, the, on the internet. The message came to my email box and I tried to watch the clip. And he said, he was preaching one, in one area, it was only one of the crusades. And they were talking about, they were teaching Art chapter 19. The story of uh, that rich tax collector. Amen. Amen. How many people remember his name? The rich tax collector. Yes? Zacchaeus. Thank you, my sister. Zacchaeus. So how Zacchaeus received the gospel of Christ and also restituted, you know, trying to offer back what he has stolen from people. So they preached that gospel about people that committed sin and the thing they can cover up. And the pastor says, tomorrow, if you know that you have stolen anything from anyone, or you have done some other thing that you need to restitute from, and we want you to bring it behind the platform, you don't need to speak to anybody, just write a letter, drop it there, write a letter, and we will try to, if you are, if you are, if you are afraid to get into trouble, we will get it across to the owners for you. And we will tell them that we preach and you have, you have repented and you want to return it to them. Just write a letter and drop it behind the platform. Do you know, the pastor said, the next day, they were surprised at what they saw, the whole place was full. Which means people have been stealing. The people of God have been stealing. <laughs> people have been stealing. They've been living in, 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 in immoralities. The whole backstage was full of stolen items and with notes to the addresses of the people, including the wedding gown. The pastor said on the wedding gown, there's a note. Because when you bring people, you put a note, you attach it to it so that they will know that where you want it to go. So you put the address of where you stole it and the person... So, they checked the wedding gown, they, said, they saw the note there and said, I'm very sorry, I stole this wedding gown and I want it to be returned to Susu address, so that's where I stole it from. You know? So, the, the, the preacher now called the police. But before they make announcement that previous day, they told them they will not hand them over to any police. They will just do it decently. They will deal with it themselves. They don't need to, you don't need to put your name or address, just put the name of where you stole from and the address. So that nothing will get back to you. They, you know that God has forgiven you for saying that. So they all repented in the paper and they brought all the things they have stolen. And the people now handed it over to police for police to do the deliveries and to the owners where they are stolen from. You see? So that is the way to uncover sin, unrighteousness. But that is just similar to what I'm talking about, but it's not really what I'm talking about. He said, he that covers his sin will not prosper. 
There is no prosperity for someone that cover up a sin. There is no somebody, there is no prosperity or permanent joy for somebody that pretends that is not a sinner when he is a sinner. I don't know why God is bringing out this today. That is not the message I prepared for today. But I just believe that it came to me as I was singing. Even I was here, I came up to preach another message. But I was reading here and it came to my mind that I should talk about this. I wanted to preach the same message I preached in Balihonis, which is from the first and second King chapter 17. But this comes up. So brethren, I beseech you in the name of the Lord, as I am closing, like I told you, the time is up and I don't want to spend more than my time. Every sin covered, do anything within your reach to unleash them, to remove them from you, so that you'll be able to prosper. Let joy come to you. Let the moment of refreshing of the Lord come to you. Let increase of the Lord come to you. Let happiness of the Lord come to you. Let lifting and promotion of the Lord come to you. Let the Lord, Lord cannot fulfill the promises concerning your life if the sins are covered. Sins cannot, you cannot kill sin. They don't die. The sin we commit and cover up, they only they are only hidden and they are still going to find out they are going to locate the owner they will find out and when they do they will put the owners into shame so every unconfessing they all they find they know their ways they find their ways to disgrace the owner and to destroy their joy some of them wait until the day of glory when you want to celebrate something when you are you want to when you are happy and they just find their way to come and destroy the happiness to pollute the joy because they have been long on the carpet any sin that you sweep on the carpet will find you out and they will disgrace you so bring out every sin do not cover up release them and let them go because the bible says he that the lord has set free shall be free indeed so if the lord set you free through the revealing of your sin the lord will set you free indeed and the Bible, the, the second part says whosoever confesses and forsake them we have mercy so as to anyone that confess their sin and forsake their sin they always receive mercy from the lord so mercy only come and fulfillment only come establishment only come lifting only come by revealing what sins you have committed and the lord will have mercy on you but never cover them confess them and repent from them not only confessing but when you stand up to confess you have the grace to also repent from all your sin and the lord will have mercy on you in the mighty name of jesus so if you have anything covered this is a message to you expose yourself that god might cover you up amen it is only the lord that can cover can cover you he will take care of you no matter how terrible the sin may be he is a faithful and wonderful father he will always have mercy on you and forgive all your sin if you can confess them today and forsake them he will provide you with mercy from his throne and from his kingdom in the mighty name of jesus Amen.